So today we're going to be talking about plant reproduction and hormones. So let's dive right in. Vegetative propagation. This is a type of asexual reproduction that is expressed in angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. And again, they produce asexually, a meaning without sex, by vegetative propagation. In this process, a single plant produces offspring that's identical to itself. So right here, a plant might be clipped off, or the shoot might be held below the soil, and eventually it's going to form an exact clone of itself. So asexual reproduction, again, it's going to enable well-developed plants or adapted plants in that environment to rapidly fill up that environment. However, there's not going to be any type of variation. So if some type of occurrence happens where that plant is no longer adapted for the situation, all of them will die off because there's no new genes that have been expressed into that gene pool. So flowers. If you remember way back, a couple six weeks ago, we talked about reproduction in both plants and animals, and I said we'd come back to it, and we are. So flowers are the reproductive organs that are composed of four different kinds of specialized leaves, sepals, petals, stamens, and the carpel. <clears throat> the sepals you can find right here, and these enclose the bud before it opens, and they will protect the flower while the flower is developing. The petals right here are found just inside the sepals. Within the petals are the structures that produce the male and the female gametophytes. Stamens right here are collectively the male portions of the plant, and they consist of an anther which is held up by the stalk. On the anther, you're going to find pollen, or plant sperm. Carpels produce and shelter the female gametophyte. So we have our carpel right here. And eventually the seeds. The carpels consist of an ovary containing the eggs, or ovules, also called ova, and a narrow stalk that we call the style with a sticky stigma at the top that's specialized in capturing pollen. So what eventually happens, either wind blows pollen from this plant or a different one, or a bee, a bird, a bat, or even a human could come along and will brush pollen up over here to the sticky stigma. And remember, we have the sticky stigma where the sperm or the pollen attaches itself. The sperm then travels down the style into the ovaries, where eventually it's going to fertilize one of the ovules, or the eggs. So the male gametophyte, or the pollen grains, develop inside the anthers. The female gametophytes develop inside each carpel of the flower. The ovules, or the eggs, are the future seeds, and they're enveloped in a protective ovary. One of the eight nuclei near the base of the female gametophyte is the nucleus of an egg. If fertilization takes place, the egg is then going to fuse with the male gametophyte to form a zygote. That grows into a new sporophyte plant. So looking at our plant reproduction, we have the male portion, which comes from our anther right here, held up by the filament, and our female portion, which consists of our sticky stigma, the style, and the ovaries, and then the eggs, or ova, inside the ovaries. So the male, we have inside the anthers, meiosis, which is sexual reproduction, produces four haploid spore cells. And remember, a diploid cell has two sets of chromosomes. The haploid cell has half that amount because it's a sex cell or a gamete. The nucleus of each of those pollen spores then divides, and the pair of the nuclei and their surrounding cell wall are the male gametophyte. So in our female, again, we undergo meiosis or sexual reproduction. Inside the ovule, a single diploid cell undergoes the process of meiosis. It is going to produce four haploid cells, three of those which we call polar bodies just disintegrate and get reabsorbed back into the plant. The remaining cell undergoes mitosis to produce eight different nuclei. 
The eight nuclei and the surrounding membrane are called the embryo sac. This is the female gametophyte. So what is pollination and how does it occur? Well, pollination is basically just the transfer of pollen to the female flower parts. Some angiosperms, which again, an angiosperm is a flowering plant, are pollinated by the wind. But most of them rely on birds, bats, insects, and us to pollinate one flower from another. Animal pollinated plants have a variety of adaptations to attract insects or other animals such as very bright petals or really sweet nectar. If a pollen grain lands on that sticky stigma of the flower of the same species, it can travel down that long style into the ovary and fertilization can occur. One cell within the pollen grain divides and it will form two sperm cells and the other cell will become the pollen tube. The pollen tube, which contains a tube nucleus and two sperm cells, grows into the style, which we have right here. This is where it will reach the ovary to enter the ovule. So pollen from the anther or plant sperm gets onto the sticky stigma, travels down the style into the ovary where it's going to find an ovule to fertilize. Inside the embryo sac, two fertilizations will take place. One is actually going to produce that diploid zygote or the baby plant. The other one is going to produce a food-rich tissue called the endosperm. This is what the little baby plant, or the zygote, is going to eat while it's developing. The rich supply of the endosperm nourishes the embryo as it grows. As the angiosperm seeds mature, the ovary walls thicken to form a fruit, which is what we eat, like apples and pears. Yep, that's what we're eating and it closes the developing seeds. So, now that we've talked about plant reproduction, how do the systems interact to form the function of response in plants? Well, just like we have hormones, plants have hormones as well. And just like we respond to our external environment, like light, heat, cold, gravity, moisture, plants do as well. So we have different types of plant hormones. Target cells have receptors for particular hormones. And depending on what type of receptor is present, a specific hormone may affect the root, the stem, or the flower differently. There are five major types of plant hormones. Those are auxins, cytokinins, gibberellins, abscisic acid, and ethylene. So I'm going to give you a description of the five types of plant hormones. Make sure you write these down because I guarantee you'll see these on your exam. So auxins, these promote cell elongation and apical dominance. They also stimulate the growth of new roots. Every test I've seen has a question and the plant's going like this and it's looking over here towards the sun. And it always asks which part of the plant is going to have the most auxin. And it'll give you like part A, part B, part C, part D. Right here is going to be the most elongated portion of that plant. So the most elongated portion is going to have the highest concentration of auxin. Many students choose right here. That's wrong. This is actually scrunched up. Right here, my muscles are elongated. This section, they're scrunched up. So right here in a plant, would have the most auxin. These are produced in the shoot, the apical meristem, and transported elsewhere. Cytokinins are another type of hormone. These stimulate cell division and they affect root growth and differentiation. They can also work in opposition, meaning against auxins, and they occur in growing roots. Gibberellins, I like that one. It stimulates growth and it influences various developmental processes, as well as promotes germination. They're found in meristems of the shoot, the root, and the seed embryo. Abscisic acid is another type of plant hormone, and it inhibits, and remember inhibits mean to stop, and it promotes seed dormancy, when the plant needs to go into a state to save up until there's more water or more nutrients available, so it goes dormant. 
kind of like how some animals like bears hibernate in the winter. And this occurs or is found in terminal buds and in seeds. Terminal means the end of. The last type of hormone we're going to talk about is ethylene, and this stimulates the fruit terpene. It causes plants to seal off and drop unnecessary organs, such as leaves in the autumn. So that's one of the things that's responsible for all of those gorgeous colors of leaves that you see in the fall. And this type of hormone is found in fruit tissues, aging leaves, and flowers. Well, that concludes our discussion over plant reproduction and hormones. Stay tuned for plant tropisms.